Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Chester left a note saying he was at the Alifraganza. I thought I'd go over and watch him squander his money for a while. Well, now, I'll just go with you. <laughs> that bartender's owed me $5 for a month. Yeah? Why don't you hire a bill collector, Doc? Then I'd have to spend my time trying to run him down. You know, you ought to make people pay in advance. Uh, the condition most of my customers arrive in, they'd bleed to death while I was making change. Well, a lot of them do anyway. Yeah. Oh, they do, huh? Well, that's not my fault. If a man's going to get himself all torn apart, fighting and brawling, you can't expect me to patch him up every time. You know, Matt, there's men in this town whose lives I've saved two or three times. I can probably name them, Doc. <laughs> oh, there's Chester. Oh, he's sitting over there with some stranger. Uh, why don't you get your money from the bartender and then join us, huh? Yeah, and then the bartender'd have it back in a half an hour. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> well, I'll see you later, Matt. Okay, Doc. Hello. Well, hello, Mr. Dillon. Hello, Chester. Uh, this here is Mr. Reeves. Mr. Reeves? Franklin J. Reeves. How do you do, Marshal? Buy a drink? Uh, no. No, thanks. I don't think so. Yeah, where are you from, Mr. Reeves? Uh, Mr. Reeves come in on the stage from Denver last week. Oh, you live in Denver? Oh, good heavens, no. New York, Marshal. Uh, see, he came out west a couple of months ago to invest some money in land and cattle and the like. Mr. Reeves is awful rich. Well, I might be if Mother Nature holds out, Chester. His girl's come in on stage today. Oh, is that so? Uh, it's his fine sea, he calls her. He, he met her in Denver. My, you have been busy, haven't you, Chester? Oh, you don't know the half of it. He had to come head on business, you see. They're fixing to get married in St. Louis. Wow, well, congratulations. Thank you. Marshal, is the stage always this late? He's worried, Mr. Dillon, what with his girl on the stage and all. It'll be along, Mr. Reed. I didn't tell him what we know about what else is on that stage. What? It's nothing important. No, it ain't your money, Mr. Reeves. But maybe that's why the stage is late all the same. What are you talking about, Chester? They're carrying $50,000 in gold, that's what. Well? Well, if somebody wanted that gold, they'd have to stop the stage long enough to get it unloaded, wouldn't they? Bandits. You mean bandits? It'll get here, all right, Mr. Reeves. It's usually a little late. But it might have been held up. There might have been a shooting. Ah, oh, that's just Chester's talking. Hey, wait that's a minute. Right. Listen. Ah, oh, there it is now. Now, come on. The uh, stage office is right next door. Well, I guess it wouldn't be here if anything had happened. Oh, it always gets here sooner or later. This is certainly the last time I'll let Laura travel alone. There it is. Everything's fine. Marshal! Marshal, come here! Who's that? That's Jim Buck. He's a driver. Well, I'll go see what he wants. Marshal? What is it, Jim? You got held up, Marshal. What? Lost 50,000 in gold and... Where did it happen? 
Shot and withdraw, but... Uh, Anybody shot? Wasn't a shot fired. Laura! But Marshal... Where's Laura? Driver, where's the girl who was on this stage? What's happened to her? I was trying to tell the Marshal. He took the gold and he took the girl, too. Well, that's impossible. Well, that's what happened, mister. He held a shotgun on us and there was nothing we could do. I don't believe it. Now, take it easy, Mr. Reeves. We'll find him. Uh, do you recognize him, Jim? All I can tell you is he had two horses and they was both sorrels. By heaven, Marshal, you'd better get Laura back here at once or you'll never work for the government or anybody else again. What? You heard what I said. Chester, go get our horses. I'll pick up a couple of rifles. Yes, sir. Aren't you going to form a posse? No. There'd be too much shooting around the girls. Well, you'd better have her here by nightfall, Marshal. Mr. Reeves, would you like to come with us? No. No, I'll handle matters at this end. Yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> This is it, l and Filters. It stands out from all the rest. Miracle Tip, much more flavor. l and has got everything. It's the best. l and is best. Stands out from all the rest. l and has got everything. Everything? Everything. Best flavor? l and stands out for flavor. The Miracle Tip draws easy. Let you enjoy all the taste. Best filter? L&M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Best tobaccos? Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L&M tobaccos. Light and mild. Every way, L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. How easy they draw. How mild they are. L&M is sweeping the country. It's America's best filter tip cigarette. A blood-red sun was dropping over the edge of the prairie when Chester and I reached Cottonwood Draw and picked up their trail. We rode hard till night fell, and we had to stop and wait for daylight. But with the morning, we drew a heavy rain that washed out every track. And although we scouted a big piece of the country the next couple of days, it was hopeless. And finally, we headed back to Dodge, empty-handed. When we got there, I went over to the Long Branch to see if there was any news. <laughs> Welcome back, Matt. Well, how are you, Kitty? Sit down. Yeah. Thanks. Oh. You've been riding? <laughs> I sure have. No luck, huh? Yeah, it's a big prairie, Kitty. Well, nobody can blame you, Matt. Yeah, Reeves will blame me. Not that I care much. <laughs> Reeves is no good, Matt. Well, I suppose it's pretty hard on him, his fiancée and all. I'll tell you why he's no good. Oh? He's been drunk most of the time you're away, and he was bragging to one of the girls last night. Bragging? Yeah. About what? Well, it has to do with his girl, Laura seems her father got into a business deal with Reeves up in Denver. And Reeves got him tied up good somehow and then threatened to ruin him. Oh? Uh-huh. Well, what happened? He didn't ruin him. He took Laura instead. Oh. Uh-huh. Well, maybe she likes him, Kitty. You think a girl's likely to be in love with a man who got her like that? Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> Not much to bring her back to, is it? First... Reeves steals her, and then some outlaw steals her. That girl could learn to hate men. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, there's nothing I can do right now, Kitty. Just have to wait and see what turns up. I waited. I waited a week. 
Reeves was drunk the whole time, telling everybody how he was going to fix me up good, but not doing much about it except to stay out of my way. Things were quiet otherwise, and Chester and I spent most of the time in the office. Well, he sure did fool me, Mr. Dillon. What do you mean, Reeves? He seemed like such a nice fellow, and so rich. Yeah, he's rich, all right. But poor in spirit. Uh, Chester, hmm? have you been going to church again? Yes, sir. Last Sunday. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. It rained. Well, now, I like church, Mr. Dillon, but I hate to get all dressed up. Seems like it... Well, hello, Jim. Hello, Chester. Marshal? How's the stage business, Jim? Well, we ain't been held up lately. <laughs> oh, that's something. But the reason I come to see you, Marshal, is that I run into a fella back at the Rock Peak Station this morning... Rode in there from the south and mentions he'd seen a man and a woman on the way. Oh? Well, they rode off as soon as they saw him, so he didn't get very close. But I asked him about it, and he was uh, pretty sure their horses was the same color. Sorrel? That's what he said. I, uh... I want to go with you, Marshal. What? Well, he told me where he saw them. Uh, I know right where it is. Besides, that woman's out there against her will. Oh, sure, but it's not your job, Jim. Well, I was driving the stage. You took her off of, Marshal. But on my mind, something terrible. Ah. All right. Uh, Chester, you keep an eye on things here, huh? We'll be back in a few days, if we have any luck at all. The next morning, Jim Buck and I cut their trail some 50 miles south of Dodge. We followed it for a way, and then it turned northeast, back in the general direction of Dodge. It was a hot, still day, and on the horizon there were occasional flashes of heat lightning. And then in the distance we saw the long, low cloud of yellow dust that met cattle, a Texas herd trailing north. The outlaw's tracks led straight into it, and we soon pulled up beside a string of longhorns that stretched several miles each way. We'll have to find a leg and cut through them, Marshal. Yeah. Hold up! Hold up there! What's he yelling about? I don't know. You ain't aiming to cross that herd, are you? You see anything of a man and a woman around here, mister? I ain't seen nothing but cattle and cowboys for six weeks. Well, we're standing on their trail. It leads right into your herd. I can't help that. Them cattle have been dry since yesterday morning. That Kansas heat lightning didn't exactly soothe them to them. Nobody's riding through there. Look, mister, I'm a U.S. Marshal, and your herd's crossed the trail of an outlaw. Now, we've got to cut through here. No, you don't. You'll either have to wait or ride around the drag back there. It's only a mile or so. That outlaw's got a kidnapped woman with him, mister. He has? Well, I can't help that. I'm boss of this outfit, and I got 3,000 head of cattle here. They're too nervy now. Look at them. Yeah, they're moving pretty fast, all right. Too fast. And I sure can't risk your touching them off by riding through them. Yeah, I know. But I hate to lose the time. You got more time than I got cattle, Marshal. Well, I don't know about that, but I want chance to stampede. All right, come on, Jim. We'll ride around the drag. Okay, Marshal. Well, see you in Dodge, mister. The uh, Alifagans is still running? Yeah, it is. I'm mostly on Texas money. Adios. Come on, Jim. We rode down along the herd and then back up the other side finally found the trail again and followed it till dark. Next morning, we saw that the outlaw was still headed straight for Dodge, and all we could figure was that he must be new to the country and was just plain lost. By noon, we were inside of town, and soon after, we rode up Front Street and got down at the jail. Chester saw us and came running out. Mr. Dillon, we got him. They rode right in here early this morning. Huh? Did he give himself up? Yes, sir. I got him locked up, and the money's over at the bank. How's the girl, Chester? Oh, she's fine, Jim. A little tired, but fine. Oh, that's good. What's his story? Who is he? Says his name's Jack Fitch, and that's all he'll say. 
I swear I give up on him, Mr. Dillon. Maybe you can get something out of it. All right, I'll talk to him. And I want to see this Laura. Where is she? She's over at the Dodge house with Reeves. He made her go, but she sure didn't want to. Well, I'll talk to them later. Yes, sir. You're Jack Fitch, huh? You're new around here, aren't you? You got anything to say, Marshal? Say it right out. All right. Why'd you give yourself up? Why do you care? You got the money back and... And what? Nothing. Marshal, I'm ready to serve my time. But I don't have to talk. Not for you, not for nobody else. Okay, Fitch, have it your own way. Marshal? Yeah. I don't suppose you'd let me out of here long enough to kill Reeves, would you? Laura told you about him, huh? I wouldn't mind hanging. It'd be worth it. What makes you think what you did's any better? Oh, you wouldn't understand. Look. Do what you can for her, will you? Anything else you want to tell me, Fitch? No, that's all. I've got L and M. I've got L and M. I've got L and M. And L and M's got everything. Best filter. No filter compares with L and M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Best flavor. The miracle tip draws easy, lets you enjoy all the taste. Best tobaccos. Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L and M tobaccos. Light and mild. Today, buy L and M. It's sweeping the country because it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Yes, today, why don't you get L&M? Because L&M's got everything. This is it, L&M filters. L&M's got everything. It's the best. Dillon. Some other time, Marshal. Open this door before I kick it open, Reeves. What do you want? Nothing from you. Laura? I'm Marshal Dillon. How do you do? I'm sorry to bother you this way. That's all right. Uh, it's about Jack Fitch. You want my help to put him in prison, is that right? Yeah, that's right. He gave himself up. He returned the money and me. Yeah, sure, but I'm going to need your testimony in court. Forget it, Marshal. It's all over. We're leaving Dodge on the next train. No. Don't tell me no. I said we're leaving. Reeves. What? Why don't you get out of here? Get out of here? You heard me. Now outside. Now look here, Marshal. Then I'll throw you up. Uh, look, uh, Laura. Yes? Will it help if uh, I tell you that I know about you and Reeves? About why you're going to marry him? I hate him. 
Why did Jack Fitch give himself up? He gave himself up because we decided we didn't want to be hunted down the rest of our lives. Well, that sounds like you were in on it with him. I never saw Jack Fitch before he held up that stage. No? Well, then I don't understand. It's very simple, Marshal. I love him. What? I love Jack Fitch. An outlaw who kidnapped you? I don't believe it. Don't you? No. Well, it's true. Marshal, Jack doesn't know why he took me with him. All he can figure is that he saw something he wanted and he took it. It's still kidnapping. Jack's been wild and he's done wrong, but he isn't evil. Like Reeves. Jack's going to straighten out with my help. He's already started. Look, Laura, maybe you're right. Maybe you'd be better off with Jack Fitch. But I'm a lawman, and i got to hold him under arrest and get him up for trial. Now, what you do is your business. I'm afraid, Marshal. You don't know Frank Reeves. He'll kill me. He already said he would, and he means it. Unless you go on to St. Louis with him and marry him, huh? He, yes. Oh, please, Marshal, you've got to help me. Well, I may be making a mistake, but you come on with me. Where? You'll see. All right. Out of the way, Reeves. Where are you going? Where are you taking Laura? To jail. What for? She's under arrest. I never heard of such a thing. I won't stand for this. Laura, you go back in that room. Go on. Let go of me. Frank, let go of me. Frank. Reeves. Frank. All right, just step over him, Laura. Let's go. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? I just been over to the Alphaganza. So? It's that cussed Reeves. He's buying liquor for everybody, making a lot of talk. There's about 20 men with him now. Oh, what's he up to? Oh, he's got that crowd with him because they don't like the idea of you putting a woman in jail. They're getting all worked up about it, and Reeves about got him ready to come over here and bust her out. You better do something about it. Well, I could stand them off. But I think I got a much better idea. What? Those horses still out back? Yes, sir. I was going to put them away later. I'll leave them. And you get back to the Alafraganza and stall those men as long as you can. <laughs> Without getting killed. Yes, sir, I'll do it. Well, go on. Yes, sir, I'm going as fast as I can. All right, come on out, Fitch. What's this, Marshal? I'm turning you loose. Turning him loose? That's right, Laura. Reeves is about to come over here with a mob to get you out of jail. And I'm sure he's going to see that Fitch is killed while they're doing it. Can't you stop them? Oh, well, why should he try to stop them? This way I'd go free. Jack, you're forgetting everything we talked about. No. No, no, I ain't, Laura. But if I don't have to stand trial, we've got nothing to worry about. You don't understand, Fitch. Don't understand what? I'm turning you loose now to save your life, but you'll still be wanted. You'll have to stand trial someday. As soon as you give yourself up again or as soon as somebody catches you. Oh. I was going to take you up to Hayes City for trial. I was going to take Laura there, too, as a witness. I told you I'd refuse to testify, Marshal. Well, the court can't make you, but they can hold you in contempt. All right, then I'll lie. That's worse. That's perjury. I thought you were going to help me, Marshal. I can't help you, Laura. Hey, wait. I've been thinking. Yeah. Marshal, have they got a preacher in Hayes City? Well, they had the last time I was there, yeah. Oh. No. No, it wouldn't work. What wouldn't? Well, I was thinking if you let Laura go with me, why, we could get married before I turned myself in, then she wouldn't have to testify. But... Jack? No, no, Laura, I can't do that. It looked like I was only trying to keep out of jail. And that ain't true. I want to marry you. Do you really, Jack? I've told you a hundred times. 
Now, what difference does it make when we get married? You men can be so stupid. Of course, that's the way we'll do it. Well, I guess that settles it, Fitch. All right, come on, Laura. And you better hurry. This is what you had in mind all the time, isn't it, Marshal? I'm a lawman, Laura. Not a matchmaker. Seems to me you do both pretty well. <laughs> uh, Fitch, yeah. there are two horses out back. Now get going. Uh, will we see you later on, Marshal? In Hayes? If you get there, yeah. We'll get there. Yeah. I kind of think you will. And now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. Mild and plenty quick on the draw. That's L&M for you. And the pure white miracle tip on the business end of every L&M filters out everything but the taste of the world's finest tobaccos. All you have to do is pick up a carton of L&M's and you'll see what I mean. L&M stands out from all the rest. <laughs> Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, Frank Gerstel, Gene Bates, and Clayton Post. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. This amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield, giving a uniformity and smoking quality never possible before. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff, to the last puff, Chesterfield smokes smoother. Chesterfield smokes cooler. Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. You'll also enjoy Chesterfield's great radio shows. Perry Como sings all the top tunes on CBS Radio every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Jack Webb stars in Dragnet on Tuesday nights. Check your local listings. Listen to Gunsmoke again next week, transcribed for L&M Filters.